Napoleon by Ridley Scott brushes over a lot of things about Napoleon's life and weirdly smashes events together for plot purposes. But overall, it's not a bad depiction of what he may have actually been like. Insecure and glory seeking. YouTube is filled with history buffs rebuking minute historical details, but the movie is trying to tell us about him personally, outside of the usual historical legend. I do feel that the movie puts way too much emphasis on his relationship with Josephine and misses his Italian campaign, which is pretty much the bedrock of his entire reputation. But hey, let's discuss what are my most important character correction points so you can know Napoleon better. Now I'm assuming by now we've all had a chance to see the movie, so this should not spoil anything for you. Young Napoleon. The movie begins with Napoleon's involvement in Toulon, where he was a young, newly commissioned officer. The movie focuses on his military tactics, the way he takes the fort ultimately leads to the demise of his enemies holding the port of Toulon. But this particular campaign was not settled like this. Due to how poorly resourced the French Revolutionary Army was in this part of France, Napoleon's real genius was not how he won skirmishes, but how he brilliantly scavenged for resources and supplies and then convinced his superiors to follow his initiatives, which ultimately led to success. This is the only real glimpse of what would turn into the Italian campaign that we get in the movie. And it's disappointing because this is where the young Napoleon cut his teeth and really made a name for himself. Egypt. Now we move pretty quickly to Egypt and the movie misses a great opportunity to explore why. Napoleon really goes to Egypt because he is wanted out of Paris. After his work in Italy, he reaches high office and he is being encouraged to stage a coup. The director, the rulers of revolutionary France, see him as a threat and want Napoleon as far away as possible. Now the movie brushes over Egypt in like 30 seconds, but the Egypt campaign is a long and mostly ugly affair where he leads his men around the Arab world on rather flimsy pretexts, all for the sake of his glory, and suffers some serious setbacks. The movie makes it seem like he was in Egypt for a weekend getaway before returning to Paris simply for Josephine. Now this kind of thing makes him out to be some blindly faithful simp, but he was having his own crazy affairs in Egypt and all throughout his marriage with Josephine, with many different women. The movie seems to go pretty quickly from him becoming first consul to becoming emperor. Now this was in fact at least a two year period with lots of political intrigue and statecraft on his part. The movie makes out like it was on a whim. Hmm, well I'm here, maybe I'll become the emperor. But the people of France were looking for the ostensible stability of a monarchy after the turbulence of the revolutionary years. They just wanted that stability without the monarchy part. This suited Napoleon just fine. For him, it was a chance to show the stuck-up European powers that his right to rule was as justified as theirs as he would now have imperial status. The Russian campaign. Now the Russian campaign in the movie is kind of depicted as Napoleon's trek into a dark, enchanted forest, stolen glory and a walk of shame through a frozen hellscape, which leads to his first exile. The Russian episode was actually done in two parts. Napoleon returns to France after the first dreaded Russian winter to raise another army and go back. He doesn't lose the empire because of the shame of the first defeat. No, he goes back for a second bite of the cherry. The second time he goes to Russia, his allies abandon him. This time, the French are beaten back from Germany all the way to Paris by the Russians, Prussians and Austrians. It is his hubris that loses him the empire. In the movie, it looks like he very simply signs some prior arranged form, abdicating his right to the throne. But in reality, he fought even his own staff right to the end, holding off from abdicating, constantly trying to raise troops, almost to the time that he leaves for his first exile. He did not want to back down in classic Napoleon style. Waterloo. All I'm gonna say about Waterloo is that it almost never happened. Napoleon had a decent enough sized force and was planning on making the Allies come into French territory to fight him. 
which would have given him a massive advantage. Not only because they knew the terrain, but because for the first time, really, since the revolution, the French would have been fighting to regain control of their nation, which is great motivation. The Allied soldiers by that time had no desire to fight the French on their soil. Everyone was exhausted by constant war. But Napoleon was severely ill-advised and encouraged to take the fight to the Allies, who more than clearly had him outnumbered and outgunned. But the glory was way too much for him to resist, a trademark characteristic of his. Saint Helena, final exile. Wellington never meets Napoleon on a ship to discuss his exile. That is all Hollywood. But Napoleon does expect to be taken into Britain as a prisoner. The British do take special care of his exile at St. Helena, where Napoleon constantly complains of mistreatment and neglect. He is under 24-hour surveillance, which the movie doesn't really show us. And this causes him much frustration to the very end. Now, his death was a slow and painful experience not a sharp passing as depicted in the movie. Lessons. Overall, what the movie does well is it makes clear the very normal imperfections of this great historical figure, humanizing him in a way that his supporters and haters don't usually do. He was not a perfect, well-rounded leader. He was insecure and plagued by chasing destiny. It's important as revolutionaries that we recognize Great leaders are normal people, not infallible demagogues. The movie points this out very nicely. Vive l'Empereur! Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.